Ken, thank you very much for being here. It must have been quite an ordeal for you to go through all that you've been through in the last year and a half. Very much so, yeah. Something no mother wants to hear. How did you hear the news? What, tell me how to take you through that day. Actually, I was in bed. Um, I had gone upstairs to watch TV and a friend of my daughter's came to the house and knocked on the door said that she thought Alyssa had been in an accident. Um, I immediately tried to get on my cell phone and start calling and she wasn't answering. I tried to call her boyfriend and he wasn't answering. Um, I just couldn't get a response. So I asked her how she heard about it and she told me the whereabouts of where she thought it happened and I just started driving that direction. Um, I couldn't get anyone to answer my calls. I finally called 911 myself said that I heard my daughter had been in an accident and I needed to know where she was and they advised me to talk to the deputy that was on scene. He finally got a hold of me by phone and told me that I needed to get to the hospital immediately, that she had been airlifted and it was rather serious. And, and what had happened? Um, she had been hit by a drunk driver. She got hit head on. He was driving 70 miles an hour he crossed over into her lane, and at the last minute, thank goodness she turned the car. When she turned the car, he hit her head on on the passenger front side, and it kind of just shoved in everything into her. And then what happened at the scene? Um, I don't have all the details. I just know that she, they called for two, I believe initially they called for two helicopters, one for him and one for my daughter the person that hit her and the one for my daughter. Um, and then at the last minute they realized that they only needed one for her. And she and why, was, they, why would they need one for her? Tell me. Because her injuries were so severe, uh, they were life-threatening, and they needed to, her to get her to the hospital immediately. And, and, and how bad was it at that point in terms of the life-threatening, from what you were told? <clears throat> What I was told was they initially thought that she was dead. Um, that it was extreme. So I had no idea what I was expecting, you know, when I arrived at the hospital. Because they had, thank goodness they had already flown her. So she was there well ahead of me. You know, I didn't get there for at least an hour and a half later after she had been hit. And by the time I found out about it and got there. So yeah, they thought she had passed away and they were treating the scene as a fatality. So when she was loaded into the helicopter, mm -hmm. what, was the, what was her status then? Her status, she was unresponsive and she was not talking, she was not blinking. I don't have all the details, I'm sure they'll come out later in time, but I know it was severe. Um, they had to intubate her so that they did an airway, and that was about what I knew at that time. How far from the scene of the accident to the hospital where she was at? I think it's about 60 miles. There's no other hospital? There is a hospital. There's a local hospital, um, but the local hospital is not equipped for that kind of trauma. She was severe enough that she needed to go to the nearest trauma center, and that was the closest one. What was the flight time, do you know? I believe 10 to 15 minutes, yeah. So how important was that? That was essential. Um, she wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. They, they saved your life. Like I said, they're, they're my heroes. What can you say about that? You know, they're just, they're angels in the sky, truly. And how's your daughter today? Ah, uh, ornery. <laughs> she is, she's 85% recovered. She's still got some uh, surgeries, some things to go through on her mouth. She had several teeth that were knocked out, so she's got a few more surgeries. But I think once we get past those surgeries, then she's complete and we just have to try and put everything in the past. If they had called a regular ambulance, ground ambulance, mm -hmm. to take her? She wouldn't be here. There's no way. It was that tight. 
the injuries were substantial. Um, she had eight broken bones in her body. She had a partial collapsed lung. Part of her skull was taken off. You know, she was cut from here to here, down. She wasn't breathing. She was in a coma, so I don't think she would have made it. I know she would have made it. But for the helicopter ride. Correct. Yeah. And the grace of God. There's that great scene in the arena with the crew. Yes. Tell me about that. Oh, it was wonderful. You, I had no clue how many people were involved in this. Um, I, I wanted Alyssa to be able to meet those people that saved her life. But when I got there, I was in awe. There were so many more people that it was astounding. I mean, I don't, I think 50, 60 people total that were involved. And you just don't realize that. You don't realize what kind of effort that these people put into it until it's laid out there for you. And once, once we got to meet them, it was just, it was wonderful. They always have a piece of my heart. As a mom, you just can't thank them enough for what they did. They're amazing. Now, in a situation like that, mm -hmm. money doesn't count. But oh, no. It is expensive. It's very costly, yes. What were you, did you know what it was going to cost? No, but I didn't care. It, I would have sold a right kidney or cut off my leg to pay for it. I mean, it's your child. It's your loved one. To me, it doesn't matter. I think it's just like anything else. If you needed a lung to breathe, you would do whatever you can to make sure that happened. And I think that anybody would do it. Were you surprised at the cost? I don't think so. $55,000? I wasn't surprised. No, I had heard initially what the cost was. I So when I wasn't surprised. When you heard that, what did you think? I thought, oh, that was minimal for what they did for my daughter. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't phase me. Um, we're blessed because we had good insurance that covered it. So you didn't have to write a check for $55,000? No, sir. No. So how was it covered? Because some insurance companies don't come close to covering the cost. Yes. Our, the insurance company that my kids were covered under did cover it. Covered the whole thing? Covered the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Could you have written a check? Oh, heavens no. No. But I would have found a way. So, let's just get back to this. So, you were lucky you had insurance. Oh, blessed. Yeah, beyond blessed. Yep. If you had to write a check for that amount, that would have hurt. Sure. But I think it would have hurt whether it was the helicopter or whether it was her in the ICU, whether she had been transported by ambulance. That amount of money for the helicopter is nothing compared to what her bills were at Carl Hospital. So to me, it's very minute, but it was a very integral part of her recovery and her surviving. So, absolutely. It's and a, you can appreciate other people that end up with bills where their insurance company doesn't come close to covering it. Oh, I, I can appreciate that very much so. People have been sued by hair methods, they've gone into bankruptcy. That's one of the things that we're taking a look at. Sure. How to resolve that kind of issue. You know, it is a, a matter of policy for the country. Right. Because clearly what happened with your daughter was mm -hmm. absolutely essential. There's no oh. ifs, ands, or buts about it. Correct. And any parent would pay any. Absolutely. But then when you get stuck with those bills, that's also an issue too, right? I'm, so, I'm sure. It's yeah. a concern for a lot of people. Um, elderly people, I'm sure. They get airlifted and I don't know if Medicare or Medicaid pay for that, but I think, can you put a price on your life? You know, I don't, I can't look at the helicopter service and say you charge these people money and then you sue them. And I think as with any service is expect a payment. So no matter what industry you're in, I think it's the same everywhere. Payment is expected when the service is rendered, and they provide a wonderful, essential service. I, I just can't ever say enough about them.
So I take it you do consider it a good fortune that the insurance company covered some Oh, trip. sure. Sure. Absolutely. I, we would be making payments right now. For a long time. For a long time, but we would figure it out. You know, if I had to sell my car and downgrade, I would do so. Like I said, if I had to sell a kidney and do so. It doesn't bother me one bit to say that in honest, honest, absolute honesty. My daughter's life, my family's life, I would do anything for them. So, I, I mean, if I had to do it for myself, if I needed to be airlifted and I was the sole person responsible for it, I would look at it the same way. I mean, there's no, I have no qualms about saying that. I mean, when she said if I needed to be airlifted and, and was the sole person, she kept her mind. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, yeah. okay. The Lord's, so for people who live in rural Illinois, mm -hmm. rural places around the country, mm -hmm. uh, it's a great service. Oh, absolutely. You, like you said earlier, we, the, our nearest trauma center was 60 miles from where my daughter was. We're not in Chicago or St. Louis where there are trauma centers, you know, immediately available. So these people in the rural communities, this is a blessing in disguise. I mean, if you have never utilized this service, once one of your relatives does and you realize the value on it, it's invaluable. Medicare pays about $5,800 for a helicopter service. And the cost, as you know, are mm -hmm. as much as 10 times that amount. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you say about that? I don't think it's the helicopter service. I think it's Medicare. <laughs> I would I would say Medicare needs to look at this service. This is a necessity for people that cannot afford it. And for insurance companies that won't pay the, the full cost like yours? I think they're stupid. Stupid? Stupid. Flat out. That is a service no different than if someone's giving birth. The insurance companies pay for that. The insurance companies pay for somebody who has cancer. But when somebody needs Lifeline, the insurance companies don't pay for it. That makes no sense. This is an asset to anybody, and especially in rural communities. Absolutely. So. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Well done. Thank you. Thank it's great. You. It's great. It's with tears. <laughs> <laughs> no, my clump. Okay. Yeah. Right. Plug the phone back in in case Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Have you, did you have, have you spoken to other air members? No, I haven't. I haven't spoken to anyone. What did they tell you about us? We're, we're, we're like half beating up on them, half beating up on insurance companies because there's something wrong with I haven't heard anything. Yeah. I went into this blind. I mean, <laughs> I, no, 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 I'm just really, you know, that's yeah. not, you know, because you know, a lot of people have ended up with their lines are the same and then they're thrown in. Yeah. The insurance companies need to look at that. Medicare needs to look at that. 